Yo, what's up guys? Victor Kamanga here with another Everything Technology video. And today I'm going to take you throughout my day with the Pixel 6a. I'm using it as my daily driver. We're currently sitting at 95% and I believe it is currently 950 something. Um, I'll have that somewhere on the corner. But as you're watching this video, look at one of these corners. I'm going to have some progress bars um, to just show you what the battery life is. So you have an idea of how well it's handling the day. And by the way, I'm actually vlogging right now with the front facing camera, but I'm going to go ahead, go for a run, do a quick mile or two, and then I'm going to come back, shower, go to the Apple store and pick up the brand new MacBook Air. Let's go ahead. So I took a quick shower, made a nice little smoothie right here. Um, and now I'm heading over to the Apple store where I'm meeting Honore, my videographer, and he's gonna help me film the rest of this video as we go pick up the MacBook Air. Okay, we made it to the Apple store. It is currently, let's check, 11.47 a.m. so it's right before noon we're sitting at 83 percent of battery life which is honestly not that bad considering the fact that um, i took this out on a run the phone is a little bit hot to be honest with you i accidentally left it on my dashboard and it was but luckily there's no overheating errors or anything like that so that's definitely a good sign but let's go ahead and walk in hopefully they don't stop me from filming but you just really never know it can go either way with like the apple store Okay, so we just picked up the brand new MacBook Air. Unfortunately, they did not let us film in store. We're gonna go ahead and head over to the um, Augusta University campus, which is probably about like 10 minutes away from here and shoot a video on this laptop, a student's perspective, since you guys seem to really enjoy that on the channel. Let's go ahead and set up this brand new MacBook Air. I decided to leave the box in the car just because I felt like it would be a huge hassle just bringing it in here in the library and having to carry all my camera equipment on top of that. But let's go ahead and take this out, this moffed sleeve. This is a Midnight Black. I believe that's what it's called. It does have this like blue tone to it in certain lighting conditions, but this is noticeably thinner than my M1 Pro MacBook. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna appreciate this new MacBook Air. So as I'm setting this up, let's go ahead and pull out the Pixel 6a. Did you guys just see that? I kind of like put my fingerprint on there as if like this was my personal MacBook, but it's still not even set up. Anyway, that was just a habit that I'm kind of used to doing at this point. As far as the design of the Pixel 6a Pro, I actually really like it. I love this two-tone green colorway that it went with. It's like a little bit darker here and it's a little bit lighter up here. In fact, let me put it side by side with my Pixel 6 Pro. Apparently this year, they're actually using plastic with this Pixel 6a, but for some reason, it doesn't feel like plastic. Even when I tap it, it sounds very similar to the Pixel 6 Pro. Um, so that is really nice. There is an aluminum frame that we have. Fortunately, there is no headphone jack. What I'm noticing more and more is that these cell phone manufacturers are transitioning I wouldn't even say transitioning. I would say they're, yeah, I, I guess transitioning is a good word. They're essentially taking flagship phones and mid-range phones and kind of just merging the two. And you're noticing that even with the packaging, there is no wall brick like you get with some of the other mid-range phones. And just like the headphone jack is gone with their flagship phones. And I don't know what's gonna be next, but that's also kind of a good thing because mid-range phones are becoming more and more like flagship phones. So that's kind of incentive to just go with a mid-range device versus going a flagship phone because you're practically paying for the same exact thing. Now, another thing that I really do like is the fact that it feels really great on the hand. It's actually a lot smaller than the Pixel 5a and it's slightly smaller than the Pixel 6. I'm gonna put it side by side with the Pixel 6 Pro so you can have an idea of just what it looks like. You know, it's 
not that much smaller. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a lot smaller. Even the camera bar looks a little bit different. It's thinner and the design is slightly different, but it still has that signature Pixel 6 or Pixel camera bar that we got with last year's devices. And overall, this is a great phone. It's IP67 rated, meaning if you want to submerge this underwater, you can. Don't recommend it because that's always going to be a little bit sketchy, but in case you were to drop it in some water, you should be fine. And that's literally it in terms of the design. Um, one thing that I do wish we had, at least Google brought back, was the colored power button that's gone. It is textured, so you can notice a huge difference between the volume rockers and the power button, which are both very tactile. So we just got done shooting in the library. We're about to head over to another room. So let me go ahead and pack up. It's currently 3.18 p.m. and we are at 73%, which is pretty good considering the fact that the only thing we did was shoot a few behind the scenes shot as Honoré and I were shooting. But let me go ahead and get some things packed up and then we can talk about the new display on the Pixel 6a. Okay. So this year, the Pixel 6a has a smaller display. It's sitting at 6.1 inches as compared to 6.34 we got with the Pixel 5a last year. It has a resolution of 1080p by 2400 and a pixel density of 429, which means it's plenty sharp. I have to say, the only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that there's this rainbow kind of like hue effect that you, it's not that noticeable unless you're, like you're on a flat white screen. But when you kind of tilt it side to side, you can tell like there's something a little bit off. It's not that huge of a deal unless you put it side by side with like a flagship phone, which I did with the Pixel 6 Pro and my iPhone 13 Pro. Um, another thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the refresh rate. It's only 60 hertz. For a mid-range device, that's a little disappointing because I've seen phones half the price that have a 90 hertz refresh rate. So it doesn't feel nearly as smooth, especially as someone who's coming from a Pixel 6 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now, aside from that, this will get the job done for most people. And like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't get the brightest. So if you're using it outside, it is a little bit of a problem, but it'll still get the job done, honestly. It's, you can still view it outside, but it's definitely not the brightest display I've seen. So as I was walking, I forgot to mention the under display fingerprint scanner and setting this up took way longer than it should. Um, for some reason, it just it just wouldn't recognize my finger. So I had to like keep touching it and every now and then it will just give me an error, but I got it done eventually. It's not the fastest I've seen on a phone. In fact, I think it's slightly slower than the one on the Pixel 6 Pro, but it gets the job done. I like the fact that it is under the display and it gives it a nice clean look. But aside from that, it's definitely on the slower end of things. So we just got done eating Genghis. It was really, really good. If you have one in your local city, you gotta go check it out. It's amazing. Like I'm not even exaggerating. I've had this probably over 10 times and there's never been a single time where I didn't really like it. And as you can see here, all my food is done. And typically I'm able to at least have some leftovers. So that wasn't the case this time. You can tell I was like really, really hungry, but let's go ahead and talk about the specs because some of you guys care about that. I personally don't think specs are everything. It comes down to really how the phone performs on a day-to-day -day basis. And so far it's been pretty smooth. So this year you have the Google Tensor chip with the Pixel 6a, which is the same chip that we saw on their flagship Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. So far, it's very smooth. You also have six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, and that's the only model that they have available. Um, there is no micro SD card slot here, so it is not expandable. And you also have a Mali G78 GPU. As far as the software experience, it's actually not as fluid as I expected, especially considering the fact that it's using a flagship processor. For some reason, every now and then there's jitters like, watch. 
every time I scroll to this screen, there's always a slight lag. I don't know why. And being that it's just a 60 hertz refresh rate panel, it doesn't feel nearly as fluid as the Pixel 6 Pro and it's rocking the same exact chipset. I will say when it comes to gaming performance, it's fast, it's fluid, it looks great. But the overall software experience feels a little bit off and I don't know why. I'm sure that can be fixed with the software update, so hopefully Google does that. But if you plan on doing anything else like gaming on this phone, anything power intensive, you should be pretty solid. But I don't know why there is those slight jitters. It almost feels like a mid-range phone, even though it's rocking an actual flagship processor. But I think we're done for today. I'm gonna go ahead and head out. We're gonna go to Costco and get some gas for my car. Oh, it is so hot out here. I don't even know what the weather is at. So it's 92 Fahrenheit right now. It's ridiculous. But if you don't have a Costco subscription, you got to get one. Like the only reason I have one, to be honest with you, is not because I actually go grocery shopping there. It's because of their affordable gas. And gas prices right now are terrible, like, like terrible. So um, I just had to go ahead and get that subscription because with Costco and Sam's Club, you're paying at least 20 cents less than all of their competitors. So that is very much appreciated. I miss the days when it was like $40, $50 to fill a tank. Clearly those days are gone. We are now heading back towards the AU campus to knock out that MacBook Air video. We decided to take that little break just because it's super hot outside here in this hot Georgia sunny weather. And it's currently 6.17 p.m. The phone is at 55% of battery life, which is actually pretty solid considering the fact that we did all that gaming, some of that um, video shooting. I've been taking pictures throughout the day. Um, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. I I'm, could definitely see this lasting the entire day. I will say this is a normal day. This is not a heavy day of use. This is definitely a normal day of use. So if you are somebody who's concerned about this not lasting the entire day, you're not gonna have that problem. This should definitely last you the entire day, whether you're having light or heavy usage. Now, as far as the speaker system on this phone, it's pretty solid. So if you plan on using this for phone calls on the speaker or for streaming music or, or videos, it should be good, like honestly speaking. It's definitely one of the better speaker systems I've heard on a phone. Not the best, but one of the best. So yeah, um, if that's something that you were wondering, you should be solid with this phone. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't get that loud. It's not a flagship phone, but it is a stereo speaker system and it gets the job done. Just wrapped up the MacBook Air shoot and it's so hot out here. As you can see, I'm literally like sweating, but let's go ahead and talk about the camera on the Pixel 6a since I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this portion of the review. So this year, the Pixel 6a is rocking practically the same sensor. It's that 12.2 megapixel that we saw last year. It has face detection, autofocus, as well as OIS. It's capable of recording 4K at up to 60 FPS. You also have an ultra wide lens, which is 12 megapixel and it's only capable of recording videos at up to 1080p, I believe at 30 or 60 FPS. It doesn't do 4K, unfortunately. And then the front fixing camera is eight megapixel and it's capable of recording 1080p video, I believe at 30 FPS, and I'm not really sure if it's 60 FPS. If, it's, if I'm wrong, I'll put it somewhere on the screen. As we were literally wrapping up this video, I gave Honoré, my videographer, the phone, and for some reason, his thumbprint works on it and it's not even registered, which makes no sense. Like, literally, look. All right, go ahead and try it. 
Okay, now lock it, try a different thumb or finger. Boom, doesn't work. Okay, now let me try my finger real quick. This is the one I registered with. Now watch, let's go to settings and let's see how many fingers are registered. How do I go to security, security, boom, fingerprint, boom. Okay, now find my device. There we go, fingerprint. Let me put my passcode, don't look at it guys. I'm gonna blur it out, don't look at it on array. All right, you see there's literally two fingers registered, right? And that's both of my thumbs. Now here, let me try my other thumb. Okay, now lock your phone, now try your thumb on array. Let me flip this camera real quick. Well, there you have it. Um, the Pixel 6a is a little sketchy. Let me hand Honore the camera. It's 7.36 p.m. We're sitting at 42% of battery life. I am so tired. We're, setting out, we're sweating out here. These mosquitoes are literally just tearing me up right now. But Google, please fix this because that is a huge, huge security issue. Um, the fact that my videographer is literally from a whole different country and he can unlock my phone is a little scary to me. Um, and I'm just baffled because like, this is not supposed to be a prank or anything like that. Like it just happened accidentally. He was like, hey, Victor, I just unlocked your phone. And I'm like, how is that even possible? Like, but clearly it is. I have two fingers registered, which are both of my thumbs. But for some reason, his thumb also works. So I don't know what to say about that. Hopefully they fix that with the software update, but clearly, that is an issue. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This has been another day in the life video. Seems like you guys have seems like you guys have really enjoyed the previous ones that I've done in the channel. Stay tuned for more. If you want to see any particular videos on the Pixel 6a, let me know down in the comment section. But aside from that, um, I recommend this phone. But with that little security hazard, um, I am on edge right now. So hopefully it's fixed. And I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to the Team Pixel team and see what they have to say about that. Thank you for watching. Bye.